What's up, everyone? It's your boy, Shaf, a.k.a. That Mill Guy, here to talk to you about the state of graveyards in modern and some ways that we can tackle them that are a little bit off the beaten path. Some cards that may have been dropped by the wayside and I think are actually relevant in kind of comparison to the stalwart pieces that exist in the format right now. And although those are tried and true and are very powerful, I think some of these are worth considering once we start having a conversation about what's going on with that zone that exists in magic specifically of course the graveyard now the strategies themselves have been seeing a big rise just because of the breathing room in the format and the nature of the hate that exists in the format i'm thinking specifically of something like endurance which is again nothing that is specifically permanent when we think of something like rest in peace so there is some viability in terms of the mid-range aspects of reanimator strategies right now and the different tools that dredge decks get specifically those are the two decks that we're going to be using as a conversation piece to talk about hate pieces and where this archetype is really moving forward so let's take that into perspective by going into the modern meta itself now we see the kind of kings of the roost take their hold on the format as always hammer time being the most popular strategy right now we see other things such as burn control elementals the temple deck of the format is it murk tide right behind my camera screen and we're on that topic we're not seeing this right now right behind my camera screen but at two percent we have reanimator specifically esper reanimator is the primary version that we're seeing and there's usually some type of variation of it based on cards but esper reanimator is the big card or sorry big deck right now if we scroll down a little bit we see dredge right here at 1.1 percent of the meta right now so it's something that you will come up against in the leagues and once we think about graveyards in general there's actually a lot of nuance to it if we want to think about it like that death shadow has some aspect to the graveyard when we think of dragon's rage channeler that also has aspects of the graveyards in prowess in murktide there are aspects of graveyards in even mill as well anything really with luros of the dream den has graveyards and of course the Ogmach, uh, combo recently winning a modern challenge really with combo that can win out of nowhere from the graveyard and a lot of value pieces that come in and out of there uh with persist um so there's a lot of value that can be had from that zone and because of modern horizons 2 and the power shift that that's provided in the format there's as i've been saying a lot of breathing room for graveyard decks a lot of ways that they can expand outward and play parallel to these strategies and take note from them from the power of cards and answers from modern horizons 2 allowing them to play graveyards as what can feel like a secondary win con even though it really is it, when you think about like secret commanders in commander you play a five color commander and your commander is actually in the 99 it kind of feels like that like your your primary strategy is really hidden away in this wealth of value and control but I feel like I'm blabbering at this point. So let's really just get into the specifics here. First and foremost, I wanna talk about Dredge. And this is a specific list I wanna talk about, not more so for the sideboard. We do see spicy things like four Leyline of the Void and, and portable holes, but I wanna talk about otherworldly gaze. Now the rest of the list is give or take, pretty stock. It's kind of weird that we're only seeing three Narc Amoebas, but that to make room for stuff, we still see the regular uh, Oxyvagonuses, uh, Silver Smoke Ghouls, Creeping Chills, obviously pretty stock. Uh, uh, the One of the big things I want to talk about is definitely Life of the Loam being down here, but less so to do with lands, even though we do have two Conflagrates, which is interesting in that aspect. But the Otherworldly Gaze is the big one. Now, this is an incident that recently uh, came out out of, uh, the, out of the Midnight Hunt set. And just being an instant is the big thing with this. So looking at the top three cards of your library, put any number of them into your graveyard and the rest on back on your library in any order. So it's a card that's interestingly never really dead. So if your opponent has graveyard hate out, right? You can rearrange gar your cards, fix your draws, and you don't get the flashback, but it's an interesting way to just pitch away cards that you don't need. And what's interesting is when you're putting cards from your library back into your graveyard, while this card is resolving, those cards are in still the zone of the library so when you think about cards like creeping chill yeah that does trigger you are allowed to do that at instant speed with a card like that so another aspect you get outside of cycling lands through dredging and all that stuff so it's a really interesting enabling piece it pushes the deck into another color being blue but with all of the rainbow lands that exist in the uh in the deck such as city of brass i think it really is an interesting 
piece, especially when you think about City of Brass, the damage trigger, uh, well, just being a trigger, not part of the cost like Mana Confluence, you can react at instant speed to that trigger with something like this, potentially find a Creeping Chill, put it away. It's a really interesting piece. So again, providing variability to the graveyard strategies is something that that happens with. So that's really what Dredge is right now. And you even see a one of Shriekhorn. There's a lot of fun things with this, right? The cathartic reunions, the thrilling discoveries. It, it seems that the deck has evolved past Faithless Looting in some way. Obviously, Faithless Looting would throw this deck into a whole other atmosphere, right? It's a whole other planet, a whole other galaxy. But for now, there's a lot of enabling pieces. So this is something you have to be prepared for in your modern leagues. And next up, I wanted to talk about Reanimator. And I wanted to start this conversation off re with a recent win, October 23rd, 2021, for anyone watching in the future. Uh, Spike actually took first place with his version of a Reanimator shell. And when I say his version, there are some interesting additions from something like, uh, say, Spider Space might have uh, brought onto the scene, a might be a little bit more familiar there. We see things like Solitude, Muldrifter, and Grief being part of that package, especially Ephemerate. Um, there's a lot of things in here that are pretty stock. We see Faithless, uh, Faithless Mending, the Unmarked Graves, uh, Unbearable Rights Persist. We see that package exists. But this is, again, a strategy that's pretty different from what we're used to in terms of the threat package. We still see the Archon of Cruelties as the big slam dunk card of the format. Lots of advantage, disadvantage for your opponent exists on this card. But again, lots of Modern Horizons cards coming through and making their way onto the formula. Lots of recent cards. We see Faith is Mending, obviously the big one. And then we see the Modern Horizons stalwarts such as Solitude and Grief, the free spells of the format making their way and obviously kind of persist and unmarked grave, bringing their way for Reanimator to be in the format. Moving forward, this is really more so a stock list that we see. Obviously, uh, it can be a little bit different. Usually the Reanimator list that you come across will play blue for faith is mending and will therefore play things like counterspell into fairy time raveler to help create instant speed movement for the spells such as unmarked grave and persist which are sorcery can be cast at instant speed with teferi so this is a deck that has a lot of options just because of something like grief this is definitely being a little bit spicy with something like grief Ashen Rider for permanence things like that but we start seeing cards like kaya's gal which we'll be talking about soon but again, lots and lots of options when you think about what this deck can do. Prismatic Ending be able to answer a lot of hate, especially ones coming out of the Urza Saga decks that are really inexpensive to deal and easy to deal with. And we're going to actually have a conversation about something like Unmarked Grave, which, uh, again, Spider Space really said well on the Mishra's Babble podcast, a card that's never dead. So getting into that, the Persist card is really the number one card that makes this deck work, right? Non-legendary creature, you're not returning Gristlebrand. This is why we have Archon of Cruelty. This is the, the card that's going to make the deck tick. Pretty simple. This is the card that Spider Space has spoken about really being the most dead. If, if you're going through Graveyard Hate, this is the top deck that you don't really want because you're not really going to have a graveyard to work with, especially at sorcery speed. They're going to be able to react really well with something like an instant speed endurance or um, just a relic of progenitus or a soul guide lantern on the battlefield the unmarked grave card is really what i want to have a conversation around as the variability piece that really has a lot of angles now this is search your library for a non-legendary card not a creature non-legendary card put it into your graveyard and that's the key so you're able to cast this card and put unburial rights in your graveyard let's say you already have a creature you don't need to do put unburial rights in your graveyard Let's say you're looking for really a, a, a card specifically, right? Obviously, you're able to look for a specific creature, such as Sarah's Emissary, put it in your graveyard. All right, cool. If worst case scenario, they have Graveyard Hate out, they have Rest in Peace, you top deck, Unmarked Grave. Unmarked Grave, get a Persist, put it into your graveyard. You know, worst case scenario, just thin out your draws, right? Like there is, that's obviously not an ideal scenario, but it's something that exists for something like Unmarked Grave. So there's a lot of options beyond that, right? You don't need to put creatures in the graveyard. Again, the Unmarked Grave, you can put dead draws into your graveyard. There's a lot of things that you can do that are actually pretty interesting with a card like this. And again, illustrating the breathing room and the variability that you get out of playing with graveyards these days in modern. There's a lot of free spells to be had in the format. There's a lot of power in the format. So it's interesting to see the versatility coming out of these graveyard strategies that have really been 
kind of on the back burner for a lot of the recent format once you think of what's happened since faithless looting has been banned so with that in mind i wanted to get into a conversation about some graveyard hate pieces that i think a lot of people can consider and really just as a disclaimer i wanted to say that i do recognize that the hate that's being played right now in the format is extremely powerful right rest in peace soul guide lantern out of the urza saga strategies heck even endurance out of anything that plays green i get you but I think that there are a lot of strategies out there that are defaulting to those. And actually, some of the current strategies could probably take advantage of some of these in some niche scenarios, especially when you start thinking about some of the decks I'm going to talk about alongside of them. Let's just hop right into it here. The first card I want to talk about is Surgical Extraction. Now, this is going to be something that Modern Mill has taken advantage of historically. It's the best card or one of the best cards in that deck, and it's it's the best deck um, for this card to be utilized in. It's the most unique way that that deck has to interact with the format because it's putting cards in your graveyard and then able to, in a weird way, thought seize and really just deal with very simple combo strategies in the format. And so that's where a card like this is going to shine. But obviously we see a lot more variability and um, I should say versatility in a card like this when you think about the Phoenix decks that are, you know, kind of 2.53, maybe tier 2 decks where it's a free spell against the Mirror, against Dredge, against a Reanimator strategy. This is going to be a card that is extremely relevant, especially, you know, heck, even combo decks where you have cards like Thought Scour that you can point at your opponent. You, you have certain graveyard cards that you can point at your opponent, put cards into their graveyard, cast Surgical, that adds to your spell count for the Phoenix decks. And there's a lot of ways that you can take advantage of a card like this. So that's definitely something to keep in mind. This might be a little bit extreme to be played in the reanimator strategies for just the mirror. I think there's better cards out there, but this is definitely a card to be considered if decks like Phoenix see a rise. Obviously it will always be played in mill to the end of days. That's why mill is even playing extra paid. It wants more copies of a card like this, but it's something to consider um, in niche strategies. It's not something I want to push on all strategies. It's a very hard card to enable and get the most value out of. Now, Gold Blank specifically. Gold Blank is something that I've seen the power of truly in well historic. And really just hear me out on this one it's a really slow card i'll admit it three mana four sorcery target player discards two cards then exiles all cards from that player's graveyard now here's the thing i believe that this is a great option for slow decks to help beat other slow decks i think this is a card that seals the deal against strategies like that two cards is massive when you think about something like historic where games go on pretty long and cards really matter, this is a slam dunk in that format. And I want to try and apply that to modern where every individual card has a lot of power to it. Every individual card in your hand, even lands, has a lot of opportunity to provide you later in the game. So there's a lot more, I should say, power in removing cards from the hand that are less blank in a format like historic. So gold blank, just being able to provide that card disadvantage against a strategy like reanimator, against a strategy like dredge, you can get rid of the cards from their hand and then finally exile the cards in that player's graveyard. Now, Veil of Summer, not a very commonly played card in the format right now. So you can get around the target player aspect that you might argue against. And I would say the biggest downside to this card is not only that it's sorcery speed and three mana, but that it costs black. Black is not a very commonly played control mid-range uh, color right now outside of removal. You're really playing black for removal or in the reanimator strategies, you're playing it for the reanimator cards. But because you're already playing cards like Teferi Time Raveler and Counterspell, I could see how a card like this is actually really powerful in the reanimator mirror against other graveyard strategies and heck, even against control decks. Because then when you resolve a card like this, you're providing your control opponent with less options against you. So again, something to consider. A card that definitely got overshadowed by Modern Horizons because of how close the sets got released, but something to consider if you're playing black uh, in Modern. Now, Silent Gravestone, again, th this is a card that truly does get outshined when you start thinking about Soul Guide Lantern and... Uh, sorry, Soul Guide Lantern and Relic of Progenitus, but it has its options. When you think about when this card was truly used, it was used in the Hogak days against Surgical Extraction. 
this was a card that helped to fight against decks like uh, Phoenix uh, that used, uh, sorry, well, Phoenix style strategies that use surgical extraction, Mill that use surgical extraction, cards like that, that took out specific pieces. And something like that can be an option. Again, being one mana, you can get it with Urza Saga. It can be tutored up pretty well, can add to the artifact counts. And something like this is really relevant when you, again, think of those specific targeted removal spells. Again, a lot harder when you start thinking about Tormod's Crypts and all-encompassing effects. But again, being able to tap it, sack it, exile all gra uh, exile the Silent Gravestone and all cards from all graveyards, you draw a card. So all that is kind of stapled on. So you get the added benefit of the soft protection for your combo, right? For in something like the reanimator strategies, you're not able to, they're not able to specifically piece out certain cards. And then ultimately, if you feel like you have your cards, you're on the beatdown, then maybe you want to X all cards from your graveyard, draw a card and just keep going. Maybe they have the hate out and then you're able to cash this in once they have their hate. You've already lost your graveyard. Just draw a card get it going so it's an option it's not a great one i will admit as i've been saying but it's an option it's a card that i don't want modern to forget there's a lot of pieces to it now sphere of annihilation is definitely one of the weaker cards that have come out of in terms of rares that have come out of the DD set but i always want to remind people that this is not only a board wipe but it's also graveyard hate right so in it, you're able to, and all, so that last couple lines of text, and all creatures and planeswalker cards in graveyards with Man of Valor that are equal to Void Carnage, you're exiling not only the creatures and planeswalkers on the battlefield, but also on the graveyard, in the graveyard. So this is going to be a great way to foretell to your opponent, your reanimator opponent, your dredge opponent. Reanimator might be a little bit hard considering Archon's like 8 mana, but against your dredge opponent, against your phoenix opponent, you're saying, okay, you got one turn. To try and answer this card or try and get your cards out or it's all gone anything relevant is all gone now this is obviously a lot harder because it's only getting creatures and planeswalkers a lot of times we actually just want to get rid of spells especially when you start thinking about dragon's rage channeler that has you know delirium and can get that way with a lot of types uh enchantments going in there instant sorceries lands that's four types already you got delirium you don't need the creatures or planeswalkers especially when you start thinking of murtide regent just needing instant and sorceries, that's a bit of a tough sell. But again, a lot of these are niche cards. I do accept the fact that a lot of the hate that exists in the format is perfectly fine. But here's the niche options that exist, and you're starting to see a pattern. It's really the black strategies. Black, again, primarily here for enablers and removal. Very hard when you start thinking about answers in black because the other colors just seem to be doing better at the moment. And really one of the final options I want to talk about here, Kaya's Guile. Kaya's Guile is the cryptic command in Orzov. It's Orzov's Cryptic Command. The problem is that Orzov is really the new Simic. Simic has seen its rise thanks to Uro and um, and Oko, and I think people got the point. They said, okay, we're not ripping on color pies anymore. We're not ripping on Simic anymore because Orzov being the worst color, we don't need Orzov to get that treatment. So Kai's Kyle is always going to be something that's relevant here. Being able to create a blocker, gain four life, which is relevant against burn strategies. You just have that in your pocket. Exiling all cards from each opponent's graveyard, which is highly relevant, not only as graveyard hate, but against any strategy that's honestly just using Luros. This is just value. Get your opponent to sack their creature, that first line, Exile their graveyard. It's going to resolve in that order. So you get the sack, then the exile. And you can just pay six mana, get all pieces. So really powerful card. And again, the thing that's holding this back is this is usually played in Esper. So not only is black a niche card in terms of what you're getting out of that color, but Esper is a niche piece of the color pie as it's really only used in Esper Reanimator. This is a card that's played there, as we saw. But Esper Control is going to be the primary strategy that takes advantage of something like this. So... It's not a common strategy. We see that Jeskai and Blue White are really the best in terms of what red offers and really the consistency of answers and the color usage in something like Blue White. But this is an option that always exists. I always see people forget about it. And it's something that really, really needs to be considered even in terms of if you have a light splash in black or you are even able to cast black mana, this is a very powerful option. Finally, the last card that I want to mention is Cling to Dust. Again, we're seeing a pattern here of cards that are in black. But this is a card that I always want to mention because it's never truly dead unless your opponent has something like Rest in Peace out. Uh, because you're able to use this card in instant speed, exile a card from a graveyard to draw a card against the slower matchups like Control, and then against something like a Burn matchup or an Aggro Creature matchup, you're able to exile a creature, gain three life, take it from there. 
On top of that, you have the escape being able to recast cards. If you're not using your graveyard well, or if you're using specific graveyard p or uh, you're not using specific graveyard pieces, get those away. Escape, pretty simple. A lot of decks have played with Cling to Dust. It's just a card again that I want to bring up because people have forgotten about it, thanks to graveyards being uh, kind of back. Definitely an option to consider. Now, kind of bringing our conversation back around, I want to end off by saying that again. Graveyards are something that we have to consider definitely moving forward with the power of Modern Horizons 2 providing different options to graveyard strategies like this. It, as I've been mentioning, as I said in the beginning of the video, can feel like a secret commander type of uh, a situation where the primary win condition of the deck being a reanimator strategy or a graveyard strategy can feel like it's hitting in the deck when you start seeing prismatic endings to fairy counterspell and then all of a sudden you're thinking okay this is gonna be a slow grinding game they play something like persist reanimate a creature you're losing to a six six in the air uh that just had a six point life swing just off the etb so very powerful strategies and very powerful zone making a big comeback in modern and definitely something for a lot of strategies to consider especially because you're more wor so worried about the aggro strategies against the control strategies against a lot of the mirrors when you th start thinking about elementals but these are the type of strategies that will fill in the blanks it'll be that fifth game out of uh, your league it'll be the uh, ninth or tenth game out of your two leagues it's something that is there it's not something that you should shy away from and especially if you're a deck like mill that tends to feed the graveyard this is something that you need to be able to answer in many ways so hopefully y'all have enjoyed the video let me know if this is a topic or something like this you want to see uh in the future with other strategies and uh, let me know what you think about graveyards in the comment section down below if 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 that's something that you play, if is that something that you've played historically, or is, is Reanimator something that you're interested in? It's definitely something that I'm interested in playing. Um, it's definitely one that I think I'll rent up and actually kind of put out there on the channel. So look out for that. Remember that even the impossible is possible. And as we ponder that thought, I hope you'll join me next time as we take a glimpse into the Unthinkable.